but yo. Mirror, mirror on the wall, on the wall. Who's gonna really be the first of all? Uh, no, 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 not me. I write my own lyrics and I make my own beats, huh? Yeah, and I tell you that's peace. I don't ever go to work, I just go and take a seat. Then write another hook in my MacBook. All right, here we are with Archon's Corner. This week we have Big Z, me, uh, Dan, say hi. Yep, yep there's a charm. Uh, JR, you're with us. Hello, Keyforge community. All right, it's just us three. Wookie is, I don't know where Wookie is. I think he's in my A. He's got COVID. Who knows? Uh, these two probably know. They live up there. Or at least closer than I do. Uh, so, he's a COVID carrier. Oh, yeah. We got the plague. All right. Not really. Guys, not you can't really. joke around about COVID here with the Wookie, okay? I know Wookie has a new job. He's out of town working on it, but we honestly don't know where Wookie is. Hopefully, he's not sick. Yes, yes, that would actually be really, really, really Let's bad. So, uh, okay, so all right, we are here to talk about keyboards. This is our Crown's corner. What are we talking about today? You got our agenda. What, what, what are we doing? That's you, Ewok. Keep us on track. All right, all right. Focus, focus. So we want to start by going ahead and reminding everyone we have our Amber uh, Amber Rush 16 that is going on. So thank you to everyone who's been following along. We got some great comments and feedback. And in this uh, day and age where competitive play is just online, it is great to see some of these top decks and top players going ahead and squaring off. Um, very, very high level play. And so I definitely encourage everyone to get a chance to go out and take a peek. I was super excited that we were able to get so many original owners slash players of the vaults in that. Um, at the beginning, we were talking about co piloting a lot of them. Um, and I think all 16 decks except for two had the original pli- pilots and then even one of those two the original pilot came back in round two uh we we got we're not gonna say who won in round two but yes we got the original pilot to come back in round two and take my spot to pilot her deck um so that was no no, no clues there with take yeah her i think deck. yeah i think we we said it was Rachel yeah, it was, well, they already know no round one results we just don't know i'm not I'm not gonna say who won round two because that's no, not out yet that's not out. so w- so we are further along in our recording, and honestly, there's some great play, but there's also to hear um, kind of the feedback from the different players coming in the chats afterwards. It's great to have some of these personalities and people coming back and just talking about their deck and kind of even the play of, hey, here's how the three games went. Um, I also love to see different choices with holding cards or playing cards. Um, that has really elevated my game and kind of made me think a little bit deeper on some of the strategies. So if you're looking for something to up your game, definitely check it out. Yeah, there were definitely a few situations where I know when you and I were recording together, um, we were questioning some holds, and then we see things come together, and we're like, well, clearly that's why they want Vault Tours, and we don't. Yeah, well, that said, there was a Vault Tour winner that literally made one of the worst Control the Week calls I've ever seen, (laughs) period, (laughs) ever. So uh, the viewers can go find that and watch it. You'll just go look for Vault Winners playing in games that have Dexter's Control of the Week. I'm sure you can find one. Um, but yes, worst call for Control of the Week I've literally ever seen. Um, yeah, so so be looking for that Easter egg hidden in, 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 the, in the mesh. And you can text them on Discord and give them crap for it. They'll love that. Uh, <laughs> LMC said this is the best play he ever saw for his opponent. Um, <laughs> All right, so I got to apologize for a second. So I got a new computer. I messed up some recording on some of this stuff. Uh, Real bad audio levels. So we've been trying to fix it because we want to retain the original commentary with the original interviews from the end. So some of these may get released with lesser sound quality than what we would really hope for. But um, that original recording we really want to retain if we can. Um, If they're really so bad that we got to go back over the top, we we will do that, but we're really trying. That's part of why we're a little delayed here right now and getting the first round out is because I'm an idiot and I messed up the recordings. We still love you, Dan. That's fine. We do. Um. All right. So yes. Yeah. And where where are they watching these things? Where where can they go? Uh, Archon's Corner YouTube channel. I'm posting when we get them up. I post them in all the discords that I'm involved in, and then you can also find them on the KeyForge main KeyForge. Facebook page and Reddit page. Awesome. And, and we had been looking at a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I think we're a little bit off on that right now, but for the most part, that's kind of the release schedule. 
And if I can give you a little spoiler, we are looking for a big more celebration at the end for the finals being live. Can I say that? Yeah, uh, we don't have a date for anyone, but yes, once we get caught up on our scheduling, I think the goal is to do a live final. It might require uh, some time, uh, janky timing to find out when the best time the players are, if they're not on the same side of you know the world. Um, but we'll see. Uh, um, but yeah, the, I think the goals for a live finals, whether I, I guess that's still Twitch, right? Um, I don't. Does YouTube do live stuff? I don't know. I don't know. I'm the tech yeah, idiot. That, that'd here. Be yes. Twitch, but we'll still record it, so it'll still end up on the YouTube in case you're not able to make whatever live timing we can do. Yeah, so hopefully that'll be a, a fun experience for all of our fans. And but I think we might try a little more with that if we can get the two players to do a recorded game chat while they're playing too, depending on who it is and if they're willing. But we'll have maybe both a recording of the commentary and the game chat available on that. That would be neat. I, I don't think I've actually seen that anywhere. That would be kind of cool to see. All right. What's next on the agenda, Ewok? What, what are we doing? Big we... piece is chain bound. So kind of putting out, uh, we have our AC dailies. And thank you to everyone who continues to play. I know things here in the U.S. have been a little up and down with COVID. Um, but we still have quite a few people coming out. And to be honest, uh, quite a few new people. So thank you to all the new people. Big shout out to you all. And let's just keep playing some MM. I mean, that was a huge, huge uh, burst of excitement to be able to see uh, TCO playing uh, MM. And there's some great decks out there, some great personalities, and a lot of different chat channels where uh, you and your partner can go to a diff the table that you're assigned and be able to talk through kind of what's mm -hmm. happening. So I'm loving it. Yeah, I got to meet a new player this week. It was a great guy. We had a great conversation after game about like how the decks work and how my deck I got I high rolled in a, on a single turn and that's why I won. But until then, his deck had never lost and just talked about through his deck and gave feedback. Like, yeah, your deck's awesome. Your deck's probably way better than mine. Just, this thing happens and that's key for it. So like, I got the, like, that was cool. Like that was probably the first time in a long time I had like part, just, just a piece of that experience that I love about key for is the, the getting to meet the people and talk to them and talk to them about their, their key for story. That was really cool getting to do that. Uh, that was Sunday. So, uh, was, no, no, that was Thursday. It was this week, Thursday. So that was fun. So uh, in case, sorry, Z, go ahead. So Let's I was going to say, in case you guys haven't gone ahead and checked it out, the dailies are still running where we put up odd stipulations. So you get to play a wonky deck, something that's a little bit different. Uh, I think some of the last ones that we've run as of tonight, it was like your, one of your top three MM decks that has the most enhancements. We've had the first uh, deck alphabetically in your group. So I just saw that one. I wanted to play so bad, but I was busy that night. It was literally go to your decks of Keyforge, search alpha, play your first deck. And like my first deck was like some 56 SAS deck. It looked okay, actually, but but I, I had already plans with my son that night. And I was like, okay, I can't make it. But that event looked really, really fun. That was cool to see because I had no idea. How, like I have thousand decks i have no idea alphabetically what deck is first so like that was really cool like i like that stipulation that's cool fun stuff so i definitely recommend everyone coming out and then uh we do have chainbound that is running on uh sundays and thursdays so being able to see some great decks stacking some chains and seeing how that impacts individual decks so a lot of fun so yeah yep. we're, we're getting to play a lot of mass mutation stuff there uh Quick thoughts on mass mutation. I mean, one thing I've noticed is I'm, I mean, I've now opened 10, 11, 12, maybe 12 cases of mass mutation. Um, and my best decks are clearly not the highest SAS decks. So I, there's been a lot of talk about SAS and mass mutation. And I, I mean, like the high end, the highest number of decks I've opened have definitely not been my best this is another strong combo set i think like some of yeah, the combinations I, I are crazy the combos go wild and i have noticed um it was said like this was said in mm uh about worlds collide if they had sorry and like if you don't have board clears you're in trouble i think that goes like double down for mm like yeah. if you're not bringing more than one like you need more than one board wipe against some of the better uh mm decks or you're going to lose like they will capture all of your amber Every turn, 
Like it is not without reason that that happens. Um, so like you need to be able to consistently manage the board, which is, I mean, like back in the coda days, you need that one ma- major board wipe in case they get ahead of the board and all their creatures start reaping. It's not necessarily that's your worry anymore. It's just once your creatures are out there, your key costs go up or you can't do X or Y or they steal every turn. Like it's just these creatures all do stuff that is significant and good. Um, so you need to be have, having ways to manage the board if you're going up against an MM, in some cases more than against World of Collide. So that's interesting to see really pan out. And now that we have two sets like this, like I predict, assuming OP ever comes back, like real OP, that like that is a significant meta shift that's going to have to be addressed. I've even, uh, uh, I don't even know if you stated here, but anyway, I, uh, there are potential things that might need to be sh- uh, adjusted in SAS ratings and art scores of stuff like a board wipe. Because remember, all like the, our baseline for all board wipes that we've ever looked at as far as the arc score is based out of a, a coda synopsis of the value of wiping the board. That's never been adjusted. It's been like the creature control score has been what it has been for a very long time on Gateway, of Dis- Gateway to Disc. Yeah, which is it, like it, a two and a half art card, right? Yeah, like I, I don't even know if it's that. Or like Spirit's Way, I think maxes out below two. Spirit's Way, in my opinion, is one of the best cards I can get in MM. I'm like, I love that card for Mass Mutation. It's like, oh, no chains, wipe the board, let's go. Lay down two Grey Riders or whatever nonsense you have in-house and just go to town. Like, I, so I think there needs to be some adjustments in general with how effective mass creature control is looked at um, because its value is way, way higher than it ever was in an open field of Keyforge. Yep. And, found- and, and if it's in sealed MM, like, that's the best card in your deck. Pretty much guaranteed, <laughs> if you have it. Say so, Savage Clash has been yeah, super Savage important Clash, in Spirit a lot of way, my mass mutations, to this. Yeah, but if it's, yeah. I've found that a lot of the board wipes are very situational related board wipes. Like Axiom of Grisk is not that hot in this yeah, set. It's trash. If but, you're playing against Worlds Collide or MM, that is well, not a card. Worlds Collide is not nearly as oh. trashy as it is against Mass Mutation. There's just so yeah. much capture and mass. Um, Savage Clash, that one strong creature can yeah. be enough to make it so it just Savage Clash isn't getting the job done. Like I've I've encountered That's... a few times where my deck is primary board control is even multiple Savage Clash, but they land one good gigantic creature and I just get to be in trouble. Let's see. The thing is that that's almost inverted. If you're playing against any non MM set, if you're playing against MM, yes, you're looking at the the three gigantic creatures. There's some other big ones. Uh, there's I can't remember the name of the creature that like enrages itself and then gets to go again. Like that. That's a big creature that can Gladio be threatening. Gladiodontis. Yeah. Like no, that's just the twelve, right? No, he's it's, the Gladiodontis. No, Gladio is the fifteen. You're like a Galatops is the twelve. Okay, yeah. Gladiodontis, yeah. Like, that's a significant one. But if I'm going up against, like, any other set other than, like, a Primus deck, uh, I'm fine with leaving their strongest creature, because that's normally their worst creature. If I'm, if I'm going up against Coda, AOA, World's Clyde, ignoring Primus, like, hell yeah, I'll keep my weakest creature, which in most cases is the better creature, and you get your, you know, Grogans or whatever the heck. Like, this- this set, your weakest creature is often in mass mutation. When I say this yeah. set, your weakest creature is often <laughs> not your best because he's got a play effect and then he's useless. That's true. Like there That's are true. most of the good status effects are on creatures with some meat. Mm-hmm. So what was uh-huh. interest? What was interesting? I want to jump in here. Spirit's way is showing creature control one to two, so it's showing a one and three tenths. So I, I, I already talked to Nathan about that card, like that, a like Corey fan, whatever. Like yeah. he, that card is never a two because the current synergy is broken. It is almost always 1.3 because there's so many hits on the anti synergy. If you look at the card you're looking at, if it's in a deck, yep. you'll see that it's probably 1.3 as its arc. It which, is, which, which needs is. It, it's a 1.3 in every deck because it's anti anti synergy maxes out every time. Yep. So, like, that's one of the things that needs to, like those cards. Like that card just doesn't need to have an anti synergy anymore. Like they, its value is maybe you can maybe hit its efficiency as like a negative two point five, as like 
the inlaid, there's a good chance you'll discard this deck in a non-zero amount of games, like discard the card. Uh, but the creature control needs to be much higher for that card. Um, same thing with Gateway to Disc. Like those need to have much higher C values. And yes, you could still hit the negative F, which is fine. That makes sense. But like they are doing a lot more than they've ever done. No, I, the meta. I, I agree a hundred percent. What's interesting is one of my better decks has three Gateway to Disc, but that's the board clear. And so I like the multiples, but it, it, it impacts the game differently when it, you can go ahead and Eaton's Jar it. And it's happened multiple times where it's like th- that just took three out. Um, yeah. So seeing multiples, I-, I really like the idea of a board wipe in two different houses. So that's kind of where I am personally right now. Um, but there's some great switches where you think you have complete control of this game and then bam, it is switched immediately. And all of a sudden you went from plus there, there was a turn earlier in the dailies this week where someone busted up to 15 amber and I was able to pull him back under check and I went ahead to 18 amber. That swing is absolutely incredible and that's what I love about MM right now. Yeah, like I was on an MM deck uh, on Thursday in my practice game right before the event started um, someone had just uh, got a bunch of my amber because it was all uncaptured dudes. He'd killed them. He went up to 12 amber uh, I was able with Amphora on my Saurian turn to capture eight of it and exile my dude to take him all the way down to four from 12. And then my following turn, I lights out my guy back to my hand. Like, (laughs) that is so busted. It is really, really fun. Like, those are huge swings happening. Um, And they're hard to, to defend against. Like... There's not a whole lot of answers that you can do if someone is going to capture eight amber and exile the creature to you. Like there's, I mean, that, that did happen when we had the tribute stuff, but when people say and like all these big combos are gone, like they're still there. They're just a little bit more disguised, which I think is fun. Anyway, we talked about MM a lot. I think there's something else we're supposed to talk about today. Yeah. So our next piece. Uh, we want to go with our OP announcement. Sheep, I believe this is your... Hmm. <laughs> we'll, we'll turn it over to Sheep on this, this one. This is where we dive into the negative whale that I'm so known for. So, I don't know. I mean, like, two weeks ago, tomorrow, uh, we were told two weeks for an OP announcement. No OP announcement. Oh, I'm just sad. I mean, like, we are, unquestionably, maybe the most OP-focused podcast out there. Uh, all of us have been to multiple vote tours. Um, we're in the chase. It's something we all love to do here. And mm-hmm. it's it's getting really, really sad with just nothing. Which is why we're doing our own Amber Rush 16 to try to get some high-level play. Uh, Jupiter's back around. He's going to have his Keyforge Premier League. We'll see what yep. happens with that. That could be exciting. Some more fun, interesting play. The word is you might be able to win some money without paying in yourself. So that's that's cool for him, like to run as an organization. Yeah, I'm just more interested in playing more Keyforge, right? Yeah, yeah. And the idea is to be for it to be high level Keyforge. So that's it's a cool idea. So I'm I am excited to see how that turns so, out. So I mean, thankfully the community is doing some stuff. Uh, Sanctimonious, they're planning for their next. Um, it's not going to be an invitational, but their next their next big event. Um, the glorious few. Yep, glorious few two. That's coming around. So there, I mean, there are some other cool big events. TCL's running their own fairly big events. So thankfully, the community has really stepped up um, to have some quality level KeyForge play going on. Because man, Fantasy Flight ain't doing it. And based off of how we saw them play on camera, I can't imagine play by Twitter is. I haven't really looked into it though, so I don't know. Anybody looked at play by Twitter with their OP? First time hearing about that because I am not a Twitter. I don't tweet. That's not no. I, thing. I, I saw Tess talk about it. I don't Twitter, so that's not for me. Uh, but I, honestly, I was pretty appalled to see what was played. And, and part of that Saturday announcement for Gen Con um, was one: they're trying to do too much. So we talked a little bit about it last week, but the idea of let's show you new cards and then we have a game state going on with impossible decks in front. 
I, I think that one or the other do two separate events. I don't honestly care, but the cross was very, very, very distracting for me personally. And then the multiple misplays, uh, just, I know it's hard. It's supposed to be a fun piece, but you're also representing the game. And that I thought was a big eyesore for the community. That's me personally, but I, I just felt that, uh, if we're going to go ahead and play it as pretzels and beer game, then let's do that. But we just didn't need it. And to have those misplays left and right, uh, that was really upsetting. You can yeah, send complaint. You can send complaints to Ewok. Yeah. Oh Ewok no. Should go, the Ewok should go that. watch the go watch the Control of the Week play from a, a Vault Tour winner. <laughs> and, and and I know that I know that we have them, but I mean everyone makes. I I don't I don't fault people's displays that much. I didn't watch the feed though. Don't watch so, the feed. I mean, or like maybe we should watch the feed and do our commentary like we've been doing for. <laughs> Oh yeah, that would be so much brutal. Um, oh, it would be brutal. I think I don't mind misplays, and I kind of shrug off most of them. I I did give uh, that person a hard time for the control of the week thing. Um, but like, if it's constant, yeah, I'd be no, like, this I, is like she played Soulstone and then played four creatures. Well, he had no board. Um, there was like a play and, I hear where he, he like played an axiom, really... and. And they didn't remove any creatures after the act, or like only one one side of the board got moved. There was a a lab work in the creature line at one point as a creature or something. It was just, was a, I mean, like not there was not just like of, play mistakes, like like I don't yeah, know what like, game like, you're playing. Mistakes. There, there was a key of abdu- there was a key abduction where one side Mars creatures returned, but the opponents didn't. Is, is that what it was instead of the axiom? Yeah. Yes, I mean, like it was, but it's. They couldn't communicate, right? Because they had yeah. the other part of the group talking, doing what was going on. So they weren't able to communicate between each other as they're playing cards. And they're sitting across that kind of oddly shaped table, With pretty far apart. Yeah. So I could see it being a very difficult game of Keyforge to play anyways. Yes, yeah. I, I will go ahead and say for Tess and Josh, I <laughs> uh, that was not going to be an easy task. But just go simpler for us, guys. Just go ahead and show us the new cards if that's what you want. Um, I, I, I would have been perfectly fine. I would have been focused on it and have cutouts to individual cards to fill in some of the time as you're getting the next card set up. I mean, I like some of what they have done before. I think Brad was doing some of the, like, this is the story behind Philosopher's Sword, why it is this way. Like, as they're introducing new cards, like, that's the only kind of spoilers stuff I've really gotten into when, uh, like, the FFG has produced it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess it's cool to see, I have enjoyed, like I've gotten to play a game, um, against Josh. Uh, so uh, like that was fun. Like that's cool, but that was on site live. So I don't know if I would have liked to watch it. He knows how to play play the game. game. Um, yeah, he knows how to play the game. So like that was, that was fun. Okay. I won. Uh, so that was cool. (laughs) Um, I wasn't in the get a chance to win a deck though from the time they did that. Uh, but that wasn't Josh. Um, but anyway. But I, I do like the the spoilers that they that they just kinda give to us. Like but yeah, it's it's I guess it would be frustrating if they're making a lot of mistakes like that, but it's just sad. I mean the other piece for us is that uh sheep we already talked the OP announcement. So it was gonna be two weeks. Two weeks is tomorrow. They got the tomorrow, last- so we can't be too mean. Tomorrow is a Saturday, okay? Like, I, I'm sorry, but most people aren't working. I'll give it to them. Please, please bring it out. Show it to us. This is obviously probably make it out after. But the last announcement we had on the OP website was January 3rd. We well, were joking about, there's... is there another website? Like, Yeah, we were promised a brand new website. Yeah. It's still in the works. I mean, you know, the, the COVID situation, I'm sure, has destroyed a lot. But, I mean, they, yeah. that there have been... I, uh, other people have helped on this podcast before who were probably even way meaner than we are now about how bad their communication has been in the past. And, well, I gotta say, I, right now I feel it. Like, I'm feeling like I just, at least, you know, it's clear that the game itself is gonna live. Um, if you listen, uh, if you go and listen to Call of Discovery, they just had Danny Schaefer on. Um, you go listen to that where they talk to Danny Schaefer, like, it's clear that the game is moving forward. Yeah. 
Uh, who knows? It's just who knows with the OP side. And like I said, this I, I mean, I am an OP focused player. If there was no OP in this game, there's probably no Dr. Sheep in this game in a serious manner. So hopefully OP gets sorted out. Yeah, I, I guess I fall in that book bucket too. Like, there's no way I'd be as invested as I am if I hadn't had as much fun I did on the Vault Tour, meeting the people I did, getting to meet, like, be part of the groups that I'm part of group of, like, group with, because the groups that I am a part of wouldn't exist without OP. Um, so yeah, like, I, I'm definitely in that bucket. I think if it's, like, if future wise, I'm going to always own Keyforge decks. I'm always going to play it from time to time because I think it's, it is one of the most fun games I play. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I agree with that, Dan. If it wasn't for like the actual OP side, I think like myself included, a lot of us wouldn't be around still. So I hope one day they do get their, uh, their stuff figured out and we start progressing with like real actual updates that are related to OP. Versus, like, I don't know. I mean, FFG is, like, the master of announcing announcements. So, like, I'm tired of that. I I want real news, like, actionable stuff. I understand that the world is in crisis and there's a pandemic. Um, But just, like, let us know what y'all want to do once we're done. Like, I don't care when that is. I just want to know. Uh, that would be nice. Right? It would be nice. And I'm not even, like... When I say OP, I'm not, I mean, like, Vault Tours are fairly important to me, but I'm not that invested. I've never been that invested in Vault Warrior. Like, I would play, but that that was never the draw for me. Like, I never got into this game going, oh, hopefully there's cash prizes someday. So that part, you know, if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But right now, with there just being nothing, there's no prize kits. Chainbound is sort of happening. But like even without even, even like store level OP is just at best stagnant. Yeah, because unless the stores are just giving away product directly from their pocketbooks, like they're not. There's, I mean, the price support we all know has been you know those mats are awesome. We all love them. We have a hundred of them. Um, like, but and I do like some of the mats. But like once you've won so many, it's just like okay, anything, anything else would be well, nice. And the new disc tokens were cool, but. I mean, like, that was kind of yeah. right there before everything blew up, so. And even those, like, I felt, because I run the event, so I've seen the actual OP support kit. Like, those tokens, those were kind of new and neat, but you got so few per kit, um, like, you run out of them real fast. Yeah. Uh, at least I did. And then, like, like it's, it's a crapshoot on, some people are interested in them because they're neat new tokens, and other people... Have all the tokens are so. well invested into third party aftermarket tokens, and they're like, Yeah, what do I want with purple versions of the same cardboard tokens everybody else has? I do like tokens, I have a set. Not, I mean, I, yeah. obviously, I have other I, tokens I use, but they're cool. I had them yeah. for extra prize support at a store championship, and those went before store championship. Well, kit. prize kit stuff. Yeah. Oh, they didn't want a bingle bang bang map number mat number eight. Um, Turns out so. okay. No, I like that mat. I think it looks cool. I have a whole bunch of them. Um, okay, yeah. So the, the only other piece that we had for announcement was that the impossible decks are up on TCO. So if you are an online player, if you're interested in that, kind of go check out those decks. Um, they're alive on DCO now. So my only, and I think I talked about this, maybe was chatting with some people on Discord, but the only thing I really think with Impossible Decks, and remind me if I talked about this last week, is Impossible Decks leads me to say that they are aware of Constructed Keyforge. Right? Yeah, maybe we did talk about this, because I say this was Blake's it. last week. So it's still, maybe Constructed Keyforge is is a hope for them, or is is a hope for people who really want that? Because that's what impossible decks are. I do know. Yeah, I know I, there's people that do. I'm not a magic person, not a magic player, not a fan. So that takes away a lot of what drew me to it. If that becomes like the thing. On the other hand, my 500 decks become more useful when I only need one third of most of them. Yes, I definitely have the cards to make near unbeatable decks for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 
anyway, I I mean that's pretty good. Uh, I think we're about about an hour here. Uh, talked about most of what we need to talk about. I think we could wrap up here. Let's go yeah. ahead and do it. I know that we had talked about going into new cards, but frankly, we had talked ahead of time, and we're really enjoying MM. There's a little burnout of uh, maybe cards coming in. We will share them, but if we're already at an hour, I say let's go ahead and save the yeah. new cards yeah. for next I, week. I think we're going to hold. Up. Yeah, we should hold off and talk about some of the, some of the DT stuff once we get a more like clear picture. Um, because I think I know that happened to some of us with some of the cards in AOA. Although I I was pretty down in AOA the whole time, but I definitely did like unfairly assess some things in both AOA and Worlds Collide without getting a more complete idea of the scope. Like there's that definitely happened in M M too. There's some cards that are way better in M M because of other synergies that we could have seen. Um without knowing more of the card. So, like, I, I would like to get a little bit more scope of the cards before I start talking about them. I think I have a pretty good grasp on where they're going with what we've seen, but we've seen so little, it's hard to, like, really give any competitive or future, you know, conjecture about what it'll it'll do. I can go ahead and say for MM, you know, when we were taking individual houses, and I know we talked last week a little bit about this, you miss some of the combos, but the mm-hmm. end result is there are cards in MM that just don't stand out by themselves. But with the enhancements, with some of the play for combo ness, and that's what we're talking about, yeah. seeing that combo, they have really upped their game, in my yeah, opinion. Cause, with cause I'm, like the biggest highlight I can give the audience, for an example, if they weren't if they didn't listen to our assessment of those those lines. Is that we had a long conversation about bonithing, and at the like at the end of the conversation, I I talked myself into thinking this is a good to above average card, and then I think I know at least Wookie was somewhat down on the card, and I was like, eh. But like now that we know what bonithing does with safe house, and even being able to play bonithing with subject Kirby, uh, like and all the other like different things that happen in MM, bonithing is one of the best cards in Shadows in the set. <laughs> like it's. I was just gonna do a little. This is a help from future self thing, but the would you rather, which is, would you rather have a rad penny or a bow nithing in your deck? Like, depending on what else is in the deck, uh, it, it's bow nithing. But if it's in a vacuum and I, I have to pick one, like, it's still hard. I still might choose bow nithing. I think I would still choose <laughs> bow nithing because at the end of the game, that two steel is mm-hmm. oh, just so much better than one. Yeah. And yes. to tell you the truth, I've often had points where the recursion of my red penny just ends up filling my hand with yeah. one or two shadows cards that I don't really want there anymore because you're trying to turn at some point. Like red yeah. penny is good, and in in a much more focused thing where you can have cards enhanced, yeah, red penny can have way. Yeah, that's what things. I was about to say. Like I honestly only really like red penny if it's enhanced, or if the deck has at least one secret needle, because then you're doing a lot more with that card. See, that's where you're looking at the combination. For me, yeah. I have to go bow, and the reason I have to go bow is the difference of play versus the destroyed effect. That play is going to get off. There are times where I play, and I, I just, I don't know. I, I have not seen Rad Penny cycle back through to make up for it. Now, I've also had times where bow comes up early and it steals nothing because there's no key forged. Yeah. You know, that's a sad moment. But I think overall, the ability to take two is just a lot more dangerous than the ability to take one. And there is a quite a bit of like random nonsense recursion inside of the set. Yeah. Uh, so like there is, there are many ways to get Bo back out of play. Like in some cases, it, it's if it's sealed, it's it creates a really hard situation for your opponent. But even like in open Archon, well, the, like are they recurring Bo from their hand while he's alive, or are they recurring him from this discard while he's dead? Or is it both? Like it's, it's the 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 deck the decks can fire those cards from multiple angles. So you really have to pay more attention to, like, should I leave it on the board? Should I not leave it on the board? Does it matter? Can they do it both ways? Like, there's a lot more like keyforge calculus that has to be done that used to be only done with like stuff like Infernus, right? Like, do they have Exum? Do they have a state? Like, that's used to be all you had to look for, but like. With certain cards now, you kind of have to start looking at all of the angles of a deck, which, like, once we get to, like, live play, like, uh, at the high level, like, that two minutes goes real fast. (laughs) So, 
Like, cause you still have to do all your normal texts. Like what board wipes are they, you know, like all the, the normal stuff that we've talked about in the past. And now you have to start looking at ways that they can recur things. There um, is yeah. a lot like of creature recursion in the set. Too. Yeah. A like it's a lot, a lot of, a lot that's not bad. Like let's, let's specify like other sets have it too. It's just often, it's just not great. Um, other than Exum, that card has always been busted. Um, I, I do have to say the sad piece that's been happening to me too often lately is Imp Spectre going ahead and taking my bow from hand and purging it. I've had this happen multiple <laughs> times, and it is absolutely infuriating. I'm like, really? You just did that again? The it's funny. gods hate you. It, it, yeah. it happens, but you know that's that is the good response for bow late game. Is oh. There went an inspector just to randomly hit it. Mind the... fire has been wrecking me. I, I, it, it always hits stuff with pips. One game, my son played mind fire against me, and it got a five pip card. Ooh, of like steal five on that that card, right? That's what that card does. Sure, it's not supposed to do that. Z, I, I have a, you I have a deck to play you then. <laughs> huh? I, I have a deck to play you then. It's my uh, four mind fire deck. Every time someone plays mind fire, not only do they get the card I needed next turn, it's always a card that has at least two things on it. I was just like, this card hates me. I used to be the same way with a uh, mind barb also. Like I was like cards that randomly discard from my hand lose me games so often. Like it's I, so frustrating. I, I will say Eaton's jar makes that four mind fire really sad though. You're just like, oh, okay. Eaton's jar is really disruptive. It wow. is a very, very good card. Like, I mean, this in this set, at its top end, I think is just silly. I mean, that's almost like, every set. Yeah, well, I, and I think what do we give, like, a mediocre feeling to Pain Mail? And Pain Mail, especially yeah. if it gets enhanced, that card, I think, is probably the best recurring card in the set. You know, self-recurring. Well, I, like, even in my rankings, I had Dis as a close second to Logos. Yeah, we mm -hmm. all had Dis as one of our top yeah. two, and you can it's see it's super good, man. It's just well, like we already we just talked about all the recursion, and you still have Infernus in set. Like that card is beyond busted. It always has been, and there are decks that truly take like maximum advantage of Infernus, like I, beyond anything World's Blood was doing. Yeah, I haven't like, it's run. It's sad that Exum is gone, but like they still do Infernus every turn. Like it's crazy. I haven't run into it myself, but Snudge and Infernus are in the set. Like I've had decks yeah. with it, but I haven't seen it hit the table and work. But man, Snudge yeah. in your own Infernus. Oh. Well, essence yes, essence yeah. scale with that Snudge really makes it then, go ahead and return mm -hmm. nicely. And essence scale and uh, Relentless. Lord Invidious. Sure. Yeah. He'd be good too. Yeah, there's so many things with Essence uh, scale. I got essence wrecked by Lord Invidious limit. the other day. Oh. Yeah. All right. I think we're good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, summation MM is great. Uh, we want news from OP. Any news? Any news? Really? Like, preferably stuff that you're actually no, no, going to no. do? We we want actual news. Not, yeah, I'm not sorry. An yes, we do not want an announcement about announcements that we do not want. Um, yeah, MM's fun. Go play some uh, keyboards online, uh, either on AC or in the Premier League or the TCO's events or tournaments. I haven't actually looked into that. Uh, but yeah, play some keyboards. I'm, I'm also on MM willing decks. to accept an announcement of this is a new way for you to spend amber shards, and it's for silly things like uh, screensavers. <laughs> if they do that, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be less than positive about it. I I would be okay with way to spend amber shards. Like I'm okay with a way to spend amber shards, but if it's for digital things like screensavers, or like s I would probably spend amber shards. Like if you went to one of my decks, like a certain deck that I own, like it's Master Vault page, and the background would look different. Like, I would probably spend Amber Shards for that. Like, for it to match the house theme or something. Cost them nothing. So, I mean, it's something silly, but I'd probably do something like that. But anyway, that's just me. I'm sure there are others that do that too, though. Well, you're also Amber Shard rich, so. That's true. I have a few. I don't have the most in the world anymore because, you know, you could get 10 per deck. And I no longer have the most in the world because I know for someone personally that bought like 4,000 amber charges with the deck. <sighs> and passed me in a day. He passed me in one day. 
<laughs> all your hard work for nothing. Yeah. For no more bragging rights. All right. Well, let's close this down before I keep talking. All right. Uh, yeah. Play with some more cool keyboards. Have a great time. And we'll have new cards coming next week or in the future. Sweet. See you all. But I could do work now. Let me interrupt. See me round the green like a diamond in the rough. See me on a roll like the wheels on the bus. And don't worry about my name. You gon' know it soon enough. B. Rogers. <laughs> yeah, really no bluff. Baby little young kid, I am growing up. And I'm never slowing up. But I'm never in a rush. So I'm always taking time when they tell me hurry up. Like, chill, son. Like, five more minutes. I gotta find the right place to rest my sentence. And I don't even think that I'm gon' finish up until I get the cheese effortless like a dentist. Ugh. Mirror, mirror, tell me how it is I don't go to work, I talk to the kids So, hi-ho, here I go Like DJ Cool, I clear my throat uh -uh.